Attention friends, this video was made specifically to warn you against the potential dangers associated with water. You ask, why water? Well, because it's considered one of the most unpredictable elements on the planet. Besides, it occupies almost 71% of it. In today's video, we pick the three most dangerous natural water phenomena, and hopefully our advice will be useful to you in a critical situation. Let's get it on. Rip Current Every year, about 300,000 people drown in the seas and oceans. And these sad statistics can hardly surprise anyone. The sea's a dangerous place. It's deep and it has sharks and high waves and currents. And the latter can cause harm to people, even if they're near the shore. This amazing and terrible phenomenon is known as a rip current. It's a strong and narrow stream of water that rushes from the shore into the sea. The speed of the water in a rip current can reach two and a half meters per second. No swimmers, not even famous Olympic champions can beat that current. It's formed when masses of tidal water begin moving back towards the sea. Such currents can appear anywhere on the beach, but most often at the shore during tides. One by one, waves roll and bring more and more water and then the water goes back to the sea or the ocean at different speeds, forming a reverse flow. It looks like a river inside the sea. Yeah, it sounds almost fantastic, but this unusualness carries a serious danger. Usually the rip current corridor is narrow, about two or three meters, with a current speed of four or five kilometers per hour. If you're in its way, it can be uncomfortable, but not dangerous. Like when someone pushes you in the back, it's unpleasant, but you can always step aside. However, rip currents can be of up to 50 meters in width and up to 200 to 400 meters in length, with a speed of up to 15 kilometers per hour. The collision with such a current can have irreversible consequences. In order not to get dragged out by a rip current, carefully look at the water before entering. Sometimes you can recognize it by some external signs. It's a visible channel of bubbling water perpendicular to the shore. It can differ in color from the rest of the waves. For example, be white when the water around is blue and vice versa. However, 80% of dangerous spontaneously occurring rips are not visible beforehand. Of course, professional rescuers will be able to notice them, but this is definitely beyond the power of normal tourists. And since the rip currents occur near the shore, this means that even standing in the water up to the waist, the flow can pick you up and carry you into the sea. And this is what people who don't know how to swim do. They stand in the water and enjoy it. So try to swim on busy beaches where there are lifeguards, especially if you don't know how to swim. These currents are very dangerous. In the United States, more than 40 people each year die because of them, and 80% of all coastal search operations are connected with rip currents. The main danger of rips is that the person that goes into the stream sees that he's being taken to the sea. They feel frightened and naturally try to swim against the current back to the shore. But this is a mistake. Unable to cope with the current, the swimmer quickly gets tired and in the end drowns. Therefore, the main rule of salvation for those who fall into a rip current is this, do not resist. This isn't a joke, you really should just relax so as to not expend all of your energy. And don't try to swim to the shore, but move parallel to it. A dangerous current resembles a treadmill. To stop running, it's enough to take a step to the side and get off of it, but getting out of the rip isn't easy. Sometimes, to return to the land, you have to swim several dozen meters, but at least you wouldn't have to fight with the sea, which means that it won't take much energy. And do not panic. No matter how strong the current is, it will never drag you to the bottom. It can't even send you too far into the ocean. The length of the rip, as well as its width, is severely limited, and after 100 meters, the current is likely to weaken. Whirlpools Swimming in unfamiliar places can always be dangerous, not only because of the relief of the bottom and the underwater inhabitants, but also the whirlpools. Most likely, most of our viewers know what we're talking about. When the water is swirling at a tremendous speed, it's quite difficult not to notice. You can even create a small whirlpool in the bath at home by simply draining water to observe how it works. 
In nature, the horizontal dimensions of the whirlpools can vary from a few centimeters to several kilometers in the open ocean. Small whirlpools are dangerous to people and can arise due to underground currents or sinkholes. And don't think that an experienced swimmer shouldn't be afraid of small whirlpools. When someone falls into a whirlpool, no matter how well they can swim, they will suddenly panic. Well, anyone will start panicking if something pulls him or her in the opposite direction from where they were going. First of all, remember that whirlpools are usually quite small. They can be large only in open oceans, and small whirlpools are a short-term phenomenon, and after a few seconds you will be pulled back. But if you panic, swallow too much water and spend a lot of energy, the outcome can be fatal. So, don't panic and don't fight the swirling current, it will beat you. If you feel that you're being dragged along in a circle, don't swim against the current, Try to move in the direction of the water while trying to swim away from the center of the vortex. But if you feel you're being pulled into the center of it with great force and you realize you can't do anything about it, then take a deep breath and dive. Being underwater, trying to find a current that doesn't go around in a circle but moves to the surface and to the side. Almost all whirlpools have such currents, and they can be used as an underwater elevator. Whirlpools can occur at any depth. Remember what we said about the bath, yes? Therefore, if the bottom is too close, be prepared. The bottom in shallow water can be covered with stones, driftwood, and other objects that can hurt you. It can also happen that the current will throw you on a stone or a fallen tree trunk. But don't panic. Group, stretch your legs forward, and take care of your head. It will come in handy. And again, do not panic. This is really important. And remember that whirlpools disappear as quickly as they appear. So if you have enough air in your lungs, you can float out of the submarine trap yourself without even battling the current. Quicksand Quicksand is a favorite badass villain in many films. You probably saw stories where a man falls into a sand trap, calls for help and desperately resists. But the more he tries to get out, the deeper he plunges into the sand. And in the next shot, you only see the hat of the poor man. Creepy. <coughs> However, there's no confirmation that fighting with the sand will make you drown deeper and quicker. Quicksand usually consists of sand or clay and oversaturated salt, most often found in river deltas. Their surface looks solid, but as soon as you step onto it, the sand begins to thin. Then, water and sand are separated, forming a dense layer, easy to get stuck in. The friction between the sand grains is greatly reduced, and they can no longer stand your weight, so you do start to sink. But can a sand trap really lead to tragic consequences? Experiments conducted in laboratories have shown that objects with the same density as the human body actually immerse in quicksand, but not completely, only half. And the depth of the sand traps rarely exceed human height, and it's actually rather difficult to drown there. Wait a minute, some will object. But why is there sometimes news about tragedies caused by quicksand? Well, it's pretty simple. Although a quicksand doesn't suck up a person completely, other external factors can be dangerous. So, for example, if the person doesn't get out in time, he or she can be covered by a tidal wave or something. Is it the quicksand's fault? Of course. Among the dangers can be hypothermia, sunstroke, as well as animals or insects that see you as a victim. However, there are also dry swamps, and this is quite another matter. It's almost impossible to see them in nature, but if you get trapped in one of those, you will not be able to get out without someone's help. And help should come as soon as possible, because dry swamps act much faster. But if you get into a wet swamp and really want to get out without waiting for help or before the sand starts to thin again, there's a small problem. As studies have shown, in order to release at least one leg, you'll have to exert a force equal to 100,000 newtons. This is about the same force you need to lift a mid-sized car. So if you don't have any superpowers, this option doesn't seem particularly suitable. Just keep calm. Yes, it's not easy, but still, try. And then lean back to spread the weight of your body more evenly. And then you just have to wait until you push out again. By the way, remember the Devil's Snare from the first part of Harry Potter? Quicksand works in the same way, but you just can't defeat it with sunlight. Hopefully you never get into similar situations, friends. But if it does happen, now you know what to do. 
amazing gadgets, upcoming technologies, incredible inventions, and other cool stuff related to high tech on TechZone. Subscribe, you won't regret it. The link is on the screen and in the description. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks, and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.